everybody. Welcome to Unapologetics. I am Brentley, and this is the podcast where we read a Christian article and explain why it's stupid. Um, I know you're expecting part two of my conversation with Elliot, uh, or Secular Rarity, as he's known on his multiple ACA shows, as well as other appearances all over the place. Um, but we're going to leave that for the patrons. You know, I got to have something, uh, you know, for the for the patrons that they get that nobody else gets because that's how patron stuff works. You know, that's just the nature of it. But if you do want the full conversation, you, you have to watch it on YouTube. Uh, and it's uh, the conversation is up there. And if, just look for the thumbnail with his gorgeous face, you know, on it. He looks he's like thinking, you know, he's looking up thinking. And uh, <laughs> And the YouTube is uh, at Punk Apostate. It's kind of my new rebrand I'm going with because I feel like uh, if you're expecting a punker, then you're probably going to have your expectations met at least more than you would with just a name and a face. So, uh, yeah, I, I updated it to uh, at Punk Apostate on YouTube. So check that out. Uh, mo- so this is the, the title of this. This is from the Christian Post. And uh, it's by some guy named Michael Grybowski. And uh, the headline is, Most churchgoers unfamiliar with the concept of deconstruction. Lifeway. Lifeway is a type of research um, body or of some sort. I'm not sure if it's just Christian uh, or anything like that, but it, it, it is a research something. I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> it's a Lifeway uh, research. So, um, a Lifeway survey found that 36% of Protestant churchgoers' respondents were either unfamiliar or or either familiar or familiar with the concept of an individual deconstructing their faith in which they systemically dissect and often reject Christian beliefs they grew up with. By contrast, 32% of respondents were either somewhat familiar or not that familiar with deconstruction, while 28% had not heard the term deconstruction before, and 3% were not sure. <laughs> That's, and it's funny, too, because, yeah, they don't, this isn't a, t- a topic of conversation that seems to go around too frequently in the church. It's almost as if their entire uh, bag is to not allow you to, to think that way or deconstruct or ask yourself how you know things are true. It's almost as if you're just supposed to listen to the pastor repeat that things are true and then never question what the pastor says. I know. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Also, among those who had heard of deconstruction, 37% reported that they had seen attendees of their church who deconstructed their faith, while 47% said they had not and 15% were not sure. So they're also basing it off of like, uh, you know, wh- whether they understand what the term is, but then within that, then they also say if they, you know, ask if they've seen that happen within the church, uh, which is kind of interesting because, you know, they do, you know, that everybody's like, oh, where's Joey? Oh, well, Joey's, you know, he, he's not, they say it like this. He's not doing so well. You know, he's not, uh, he hasn't been coming to church. He said he doesn't know if he believes it anymore yeah just really just a sad sad thing you know it's like they treat it like it's uh like it's uh, like a heroin addiction you know what i mean like oh man he's not doing so great i'm really worried about him he might uh you know might might have some bad stuff happen you know (laughs) when it's nothing like that at all it's not even close you know people deconstruct it's a you know and and i i I, i'm actually more uh recently familiar with that term i don't i i had always heard deconvert you deconvert out of christianity but i guess you could like they say deconstruct because you can technically deconstruct and still stay a christian you just uh, have a bit more of a foundation for why you think what you think um when really it's just you know they went and found some frank turek (laughs) videos uh or william lane craig and they were like okay now i got it now i got my little arguments i can make my little arguments and that makes me feel a lot better about the stuff i already wanted to believe in the first place you know uh because it's i mean honestly it's not about uh you know 
following logic and reason and following beliefs like based on what is likely to be true based on you know logic and reason and your evaluation of reality it's how can i defend what i want to believe what i want to believe so that i can fit in with the people that i am you know close with in my group my family whatever whatever uh you know how can i how can i sound like i'm reasonable while still believing in talking snakes and you know undead carpenters from 2000 years ago that uh, apparently are God, but we're like talking to God and God had to send himself to sacrifice himself to himself. And it, yeah, it, it's, it breaks down quite quickly. Like you can understand why people would deconstruct, um, a lot and, and really after deconstructing deconvert, just like I did, I, I deconverted, uh, after I just asked a couple questions, really it was like, hold on, am I being ridiculous like am I just lying to myself is that something I'm doing right now and you know the more I thought about everything the more I could feel like I was brainwashed that was like the main feeling that I had I would get angry about things that didn't make sense that didn't affect me in any way but it had been repeated to me so often that I was supposed to get mad about you know gay people and everything and trans people existing and all this and that like I'm supposed to be angry about it and you can get people worked up if you just keep on repeating how bad a certain group of people is I mean just see Nazism and look at the tactics that they used they used a lot of just repetition and uh, a lot of blame blaming everything on them you know everything was the Jews fault you know according to that and the jews and then like anybody else we always talk about the jewish people like they were the only ones um it was because they were probably the most targeted and they were the largest group of people in that area at that time that were clearly being targeted but it wasn't just that they you know they targeted everyone that wasn't white straight cisgendered christian you know, it was, they targeted everyone. They went after, you know, they, they executed like gay people too and trans people as well. Like it's, it's, uh, it, you know, we, we always seem to forget that about them, but it was very much like anyone who's not this one thing, they're evil, they're bad. All the problems in the world are because of them sort of situation. And that's exactly what we got going on lately with the, the gay community or the, uh, and the trans community, it seems. Uh, they are definitely targeting them. And it's just, it's really sad. You know, you can just hear, I was like talking to somebody the other day and they are just, wow, it is, they're just extremely homophobic. And it's crazy because it doesn't even make sense at the time. Like I was just talking about how Trump is like better at the double speak thing. I'm like, I was just talking about how he is better at making it seem like he's, uh, you know, not a full tilt fucking fascist you know what I mean like he's he can do this little thing where he's like of course Nazis are bad but there are good people on both sides kind of thing like right like he's he says the thing that he has to say there's like kind of a gratuitous uh like thing so that he can point back to that and say hey I was you know hey I didn't I said this right here that that it's totally that those people are bad but that there are good people on both sides even though that 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 like doesn't actually make sense because there were only like Nazi type people uh, protesting the the uh, mon the racist monuments uh, being taken down, you know. And so when he says it like that, it kind of makes it seem like there's some other third party of there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just it didn't make sense really. You had the Nazis and then the people against the Nazis, and he's like acting like there's somehow a third group there. Anyway, it, that's but that was what I was talking about, and uh, he was just like, yeah, and like, and I was saying, DeSantis doesn't do do well at that, you know. He doesn't have he's just full tilt crazy, and he's just pushing, you know, to to get everybody riled up and so that he can get votes and all this that and the other. Like everything is just he he's got no second gear, you know. He's just pushing way too hard, and it's like it makes him look like he is a Nazi and you know just crazy, you know. And even Republicans see that. And uh, I was just talking about that, and he's like, yeah, and gay people, I just they, we got to do something about these gays, you know, and all this, that, and these trans people, and they're coming for our kids. And it was just wild. It just dumped out of his face. Like, it was like, 
completely programmed. Like everything was just that he was saying was like clearly just because it was repeated to him so often, you know, that he's wa like watching some type of, uh, you know, the content that is just repeating how evil gay people are, how evil trans people are, how bad they are, how evil. Like, and it's just, it brainwashes you so that you can't even, they're like, we, nobody was talking about that. Nobody was talking about gay people. Like he just, and it's, this is not the only time it's happened. He's shoehorned it in the conversations. And when I say shoehorn, I mean shoehorn, just like out of fucking nowhere. It's just, I'm like, oh my God, we get it, dude. You fucking hate people. Got it. Got it, man. Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's, but it just shows how well that repetition gets everything really deep inside your head, you know, and really makes you, uh, like, without even realizing it, makes you deeply hateful. And it's, it's really, it's sad because it makes you miserable. It makes you just a miserable person. And then it also attempts to make other people miserable people that they are targeting. And really, all they're trying to do is get people worked up. It doesn't matter. If it was some other group that they could use uh, to target, to make people uncomfortable or whatever, like make, you know, uh, to, to start this back and forth with the politics, they would be that group. And that's exactly what I think the Jewish people were uh, in Nazi Germany was, you know, it, it was just the group that they could use to get everybody to turn against each other and make it a lot easier for people to rise to power and then get the most power they possibly can get out of that kind of system. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's a that's a whole nother conversation of just, hey, they, you know, how politics manipulate people, uh, specifically the people on the right, because they have to get the ball going. You know, if they never got the 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 right wingers to um, support legislation that attacks a particular group of people that literally takes their rights away and stuff, you know, then nobody would be fighting about anything, right? Because there wouldn't be anything. We'd just all be like, oh, okay, so we're just talking about finances here, like what we do with our, <laughs> you know, like fiscally conservative and shit. Like that's all we're talking about. Like that doesn't motivate people, right? So they have to attack a group. And the LGBTQIA plus uh, group is, um, it's it you know because they aren't like a uh, they're all, it's not like they're all in one place they're not all in one uh, ethnicity they're not all in one anything they're just they're all over the place they're interspersed everywhere and so a lot of people uh, are friends with uh, you know uh, folks that uh, are a part of that community and so it it makes it so that they can motivate people to not only be against them but then also be for them. Right. So you got this push back and forth and that's what can get the you know, that's what gets asses to pulse. You know what I mean? And it's really disgusting because they're just, you know, they're, they're just harassing and hurting these groups of people that just do not deserve it in any way, shape or form. And they're just being used as political pawns to uh, to, to get people to vote and to get people to send money. You know, that's it. And it's also like immigrants they use for that same same thing they can drum up fear of these people you know it's just that's all it is they can drum up fear and anger and vitriol and then people uh you know then, then the the of course the left has to push back on the legislation that's trying to target those people and then it's a back and forth that just never ends and that's how that's politics in a nutshell right there <laughs> a, a current politics anyway it wasn't always like that anyway i know i've gotten way off topic but <laughs> i just i feel like that's an important uh thing to go you know, that's an important thing to understand about all this, you know. So for its report, Lifeway used an online survey of 1,002 U.S. Protestant churchgoers uh, conducted September 19th through 29th of last year with a margin of error of plus or minus 3.3% at a 95 uh percent confidence level that's yeah and that's usually with like around uh, a thousand that tends to be where your your level of um your margin of error is around 3.3 uh or just around yeah like right around three percent is usually where uh the margin of error is and a 95 percent confidence rate so you can see it's like between three percent and five percent are um you know could possibly be uh, not as accurate but and that's why you really need large numbers of uh, 
of participants for studies like this because if you just have like 10 people you know and then you try to do you, you try to say like oh it's this percent of people it just doesn't work you need at least I, I would say a thousand people and that's why a lot of studies you should just not even pay attention to if they don't have a significant number of um, of uh, participants anyway um let's see lifeway research executive director scott mcconnell said in a statement released last week that he felt it was not surprising the majority of churchgoers are not familiar with the term deconstruction since it often describes a, per a person's private journey or one that's shared within a limited social set uh, the fluid nature of the term and its affinity al among those who on social media or podcasts distances it from many Christians, McConnell stated. Uh, the term that uh, the term can be used both to represent a total abolishing of one's faith or to describe one's personal questioning and working out their salvation to greater faith. <laughs> right or just like figuring out how to justify what you already wanted to believe and you know because you want it to work you want they want to sound as reasonable as possible so that they can fit in you know, so they can be consistent within their own head but then they also want to keep believing and thinking all the things that they're in group think right so that's why they kind of have to do like like that's why you don't really see a lot of deconstruction because people don't even want to go there you know it was it was like physically uncomfortable for me when I decided to actually try to question the things that I was always taught never, ever, ever question. And it was, I mean, I, I called it like the stomach crunch because it would be this, this like crunch in my stomach, like it would make my stomach kind of sick when I would feel it. And I would do this and it was very physical. It was like, you know, you think like, oh, it's just kind of like a mental anguish kind of thing. No, it's physical. It, it, it <laughs> presents itself physically. The survey also found that pastors were more likely than their congregants to be at least somewhat familiar with the term. <laughs> well, I would fucking hope so. You're, you're like the, the king of the religion in that church. Like you're the, like, I would think that you would at least like know some stuff about this since you're, I mean, I feel like you'd have to address it at some point, right? Because, I mean, maybe they didn't uh, call it that word, but they have to at least understand it as a concept, right? That there's people that start to go, I don't know if this is true. Uh, this seems kind of silly. I don't think I can, I don't think I can believe this anymore, you know? That's, I mean, that's got to be a, a normal thing for pastors to deal with, I think. But, it, you know. Uh, but it is kind of funny, though, like slightly more like the, the pastor is slightly more uh, familiar with it. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to give a number there either, because I think it would be uh, it would be a lot more. I mean, it would. Uh, well, maybe there is. Let me keep reading <laughs> before I say anything. But I, I just wonder if they're not going to include the statistics on that so it doesn't look bad. You know what I mean? Because they don't want to be like, yeah, 95 percent of pastors then we're completely unaware of it you know <laughs> it, would just be, it would just look really bad for all the pastors that they're using there while hispanics and african americans were less likely than whites to have not heard the term before uh while hold on what the fuck wait hispanics and african americans were less likely than whites to not have heard so they were more likely to have heard why would you do that why would you flip it that was weird uh it's like a double negative there for no fucking reason <laughs> okay got it so they were uh more likely um than whites to have not heard uh, or no, no they were like less likely to have heard of the term <laughs> jeez it's like turned around with the way they word this stupid shit uh while respondents aged 18 to 34 were the most likely to be very very familiar with the term yeah because young you know kids are like uh, a lot smarter than they used to be like information used to be very curated by parents right but because of the internet you can't the parents can't control the information uh that their kids are are exposed to anymore they used to they used to be able to basically just hide everything this is why i do what i do um, is because I was so sheltered 
I was not allowed to do anything. I was not allowed to watch anything but, you know, Christian movies and, like, the most rated GGG stuff, you know. Um, except this applied to violence for some reason. It was so interesting. It was like if it had swearing or any kind of sexual anything, nope, you're not allowed to watch it. But if it was, like, violent is all get out, you know, then it's it was fine. You know, I, I watched all the Rambo movies on TV except for the first Rambo movie. Uh, because I wasn't allowed to watch that one because he was fighting the police. And so that's a little bit uh, morally too ambiguous for, <laughs> for my mom to be able to handle. Uh, but in other words, I was allowed to watch all the violent stuff on TV as long as they took the sex scenes out and they're swearing. Because <laughs> that's, you know, that's just how they think. But the um, point is they, they definitely limited my information that I had access to uh, about questioning anything as it related to my religion right uh it was just very i i wasn't you know i didn't know anything and it left me so vulnerable and uh, you know for bad epistemology for like years and years i i uh when i was growing up it was just like i had no barometer i had no method to be able to determine if something was true or not and it was weird because most of my uh, most of how I determined what was true and what was not true was based on how good my relationship was with the person that told me. That was the thing. So if my parents said that something was true, I was a lot more likely to believe it because I had a good, you know, I, I loved my parents, right? And you trust them, you know, but it was also like it was a trust because I loved them kind of thing. And then with friends, the closer the friend, the more likely I was to accept a proposition from that friend uh, as if it was true, you know what I mean? And uh, and so on and so forth. And I was less likely if I was not as close to that person. As if that is how truth works. And that's, that's nowhere near how truth works. You have to have a method uh, of determining truth that is completely uh, separate from how much you care about the people who make the claims. That, that should have literally nothing to do with the with your acceptance of propositions it should be entirely based on the evidence and the lo uh, logical evaluation of such because that's that's how we determine what is actually true you know is evidence and evaluating it logically making sure it's all logically consistent so on and so forth and then also make sure it's sound that their conclusions are true or even likely true that's how you determine what is true not like oh but i really love this person and they really seem to believe it you know, so that's why I totally believe that, you know, if you uh, that you can't go swimming after you eat because, you know, cramps will happen and you die. You just die because of cramps after you eat, you know, <laughs> which is something that, you know, a lot of people believe. And I uh, as far as I can tell, I don't think it's true. I think it's all lies. I think it's a bullshit. <laughs> In recent years. Multiple Christian public figures in the United States have announced that they were undergoing a deconstruction of their faith, sometimes leaving Christianity as a result. Uh, other times I would say that they have uh, heard uh, people say that they, um, they, didn't, they didn't leave Christianity altogether, but they said they won't call themselves an eva uh, evangelical, like they left being evangelical. As if that kind of fixes it or something. I think there was like, it was the guys for, I used to listen to this band. I loved them. There was a band, a Christian band. And I still actually go back and listen to the songs sometimes. It's a nostalgic thing. Uh, and it's also just some of it is objectively just well-made music. Uh, it's DC Talk. Maybe this band, DC Talk, uh, or Group. I guess they're not really a band. They're a group. <laughs> they had like a backup band behind them and they just sang. You know what I mean? That's like, <laughs> it was the 90s, when it, you know? What am I going to do? Uh, and I remember it was like the main one in that bit. So the, there was a, one guy, Michael Tate, uh, from that band, and he ended up going and being the singer of another popular band uh, called the Newsboys. You know, uh, the, the Newsboys used to be, uh, had a front man that was an Australian dude. Uh, and I guess he left the band or whatever. And then Michael Tate from DC Talk took the place. Anyway, I think it was Michael Tate that said that, you know, in light of all of the like homophobia and the hatred and the racism and all that type of stuff that was coming out of the religious right, that he said he was no longer a uh, evangelical. It was I can't remember it, if it was him specifically. It was someone like in that same 
capacity. It was somewhere, someone up, you know, in that same kind of realm of all those musicians and whatnot. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty common, uh, you know, to at least see it in that regard. Now he didn't deconstruct fully, but he clearly deconstructed something enough to be able to be like, I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> you know. Uh, it says it's in December 2021, Christian rapper Lecrae. Oh, hey, that's crazy. I know Lecrae is actually from the area that I stay in, and he was actually friends uh, with he, – he was uh, rapped with one of the guys I worked with at another uh, job that I was on. And, uh, yeah, he they said they were real close, and he quit their little rap group or whatever to go do Christian rap and then got, like, super, super famous and still going, I believe. His name's Lecrae. Uh, going through a period of deconstruction, but believed that the process actually strengthened his faith rather than destroy it. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's take a listen to this, see what he's got to say. People don't talk about it. They missed that one. They missed that one. Yeah. Right? So deconstruction is not a bad thing if it leads to reconstruction, yeah. right? Sometimes you have to demolish a building that is mold infested and and then build something else on that foundation right. right we're not getting rid of the foundation the foundation is christ yeah but we're building <laughs> on that foundation and and tearing down some so, things that were unnecessary so you didn't then you didn't actually do like because you're saying like oh i you got to a certain point and then you're like okay but this is something i'm not allowed to question i got to oh we our foundation is christ uh you know but which i i clearly he will not question that you know, so it's almost as if I feel like this is just uh, Christian language of, oh, no, I thought about it and I'm still a Christian. Like, that seems to be what this is. You know what I mean? It's because he doesn't he's not really uh, he's, he's not really even trying to uh, deconstruct the right way. I mean, it's, you know, because like how how do you know Christ existed? How do you know that Christ actually did and said the things that he did, seeing as how the claims don't even line up and so on and so forth? But. Let's continue. Okay. Uh, it was through working on the single and the album that Lecrae began to notice that many people weren't returning to church, partly due to the pandemic, but also because of church hurt. Uh, they were people who were just struggling with the concept of church and where God was. And so just dealing with all of those issues brought it out in the music, he said. Uh, for Lecrae, dealing with the church hurt is something he's familiar with, and he tackles the issue in his music. <laughs> okay, I guess this is like kind of a uh, this is like from a, a a Christian Post article about Lecrae. Hey, but he said I had to realize that people hurts uh, cannot be God hurts. Fucking what? <laughs> that doesn't mean anything, man. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Lecrae explained. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Going fast and loose with the word explained. <laughs> but all right. Uh, I cannot transfer the hurt I have experienced from people onto God. Because, uh, yeah. Okay. So, because God, you know, he's not ever responsible for anything because that's the way it's got to be for your stupid thing to work. And it's almost like they recognize at times like this that uh, that there isn't a God and it's just people. But they're like, but I still got to stay with the belief thing, even if all the people in the entire church are toxic and terrible. Like, he's still got to be like, but that, they're not God, though. It's like, yeah, but they're all believing in your God, and yet they're all still acting like pieces of shit. Maybe it's the fact that there isn't a God, and these beliefs make people toxic. At the, at the very least, it makes it so they can easily be toxic. How about that? You know, uh, God didn't do that to me. He said, uh, Jesus didn't do that to me. <laughs> that was people and people are broken. Uh, he, God and Jesus allowed those people to do that stuff to you, man. Uh, you know, like, why is it that, that he gets completely out of any responsibility? It's crazy. Anyway, uh, I'm one of those broken people. I've hurt people before. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just, yeah, it is kind of funny because like, <laughs> you know, he's basically just saying, hey, God can, can do no wrong. Uh, so, you know, gotta just, you know, gotta let them, uh, it's just the people, the people are bad and you know, those people, it's just because they're the people, not because they're Christian people, but just because they're the people, people, you know, 
It's like, okay, man. You're like, way to, like, get your, you know, way to, like, think around everything being, uh, you know, people using those beliefs to act like shitheads and then thinking your way out of that obviously being the case. And that's uh, that's basically the end of the article. It just ends with uh, Lecrae's uh, quote that we just heard there. Um, one of the fun things, and, and like I said, like this is just, it's of course, this is the Christian Post, right? So they, they're going to do everything within their power to make it seem like it's not like you shouldn't deconstruct in and like they want to make it seem like you should but you shouldn't right so i mean it's <laughs> it's this weird double speak shit that they do that they have to do right because it's manipulative they're trying to manipulate their audience into continuing to believe this crazy stuff right and they're just rationalizing the beliefs that they um you know that they are forcing themselves to continue to believe right and so when they see people leave the church and then the, those people that left the church are like, yeah, it doesn't make sense because, you know, snakes don't talk, donkeys don't talk, uh, God sending himself to sacrifice himself to himself is just stupid and stuff like that. You know, they have to figure out some type of way to be like, oh, no, look, I thought about all of that and I came out after thinking about all that as an even stronger question because you know what that stuff does actually make sense it makes super duper sense and even more sense than not believing it you know because i i've totally thought about it because that that's the thing it challenges their ability to recognize that they are not reflecting on certain aspects of the foundations of their beliefs you know, it's they're, they're, they're just like, oh, no, I, they know about all the minutia. You know, they know about this verse says that and that verse says this and that, like, you know, all the doctrinal stuff. They know all that stuff and that's fine, whatever. But they, they rarely back out epistemologically and go, but how do I know any of this is actually true? How do I know? You know, that kind of thing. And I know they have to stumble upon the reality that there's so many different religions and they just and all those other religions seem to think that they got it right and yet they're doing the same thing but they're like but no i actually got it right all those other religions are silly and dumb and believe silly stuff now let me go pretend to cannibalize a carpenter uh an undead carpenter on a stick uh ritualistically eating his flesh and drinking his blood you know as if that's normal and, and you know, talking about it as if it is and you know but everybody else's beliefs are silly and they just you know they're just not thinking about it right and everything i'm thinking about it right and it just happens to align with the religion that usually com corresponds with my culture and so on and so forth right and so it's just interesting that they um when, when they bring something like this up in the first place because you just it just almost surprises me like most people just want to uh, avoid that you know as far as like religious uh religious articles and religious uh pastors and preachers and stuff they they tend to want to just avoid it because they know that it's it's they got no leg to stand on it's basically like stepping up onto like there's you know it reminds me of like you know the, that ball thing it's like a ball and it's got a little plank on the ball and it's just wobbling all over and you can see people get really good at it if they you know if they get up on it real quick and everything they can balance on the ball on the board you know it's like the the board's on the ball it's them choosing to step up on that you know knowing that any kind of slight movement can make them fall you know completely and everything falls apart so most of the time christians refuse to even step up on that thing because they can see from the ground that oh that's some really shaky shit you know and i could easily fall right the fuck off that thing you know and have it all fall apart because once you start questioning uh like the the reality of the claims and how we know that those claims are not only real but like reasonable to believe you know what i mean like just just reasonable like, we, like whether it's real okay but like is it reasonable to think it's real you know that's another that's a whole nother layer and i think they know that no of course it's not reasonable to believe if we came to them if i came to a christian and said hey uh if if you i mean did you know that my friend jesse 
you know, he's a, you know, he's this leader and everybody loves him. And he's like, he's kind of got a political movement going. He even like went into one of the church, uh, um, stores, one of the church, like bookstore things and started flipping tables and everything because he's so holy and everything, you know? And, uh, turns out he got killed, you know, by an angry mob. He basically got lynched and you know what? He came back to life, right? They would be like, no, that's not, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. And like, yeah, he totally did. He came back to life. People have seen him. You know how many people? 500. 500 people have seen him. They'd still be like, nah, like, where, where are the 500 people? Well, it's I, I got a claim of a single person who says that 500 people saw it, but I'm pretty sure that that's, I mean, on good authority, that that person who wrote it down knew about all the 500 people, okay? So, <laughs> you know, they would not believe it. They would be like, no, this is stupid. This is crazy, right? Um, and then you gotta be like, okay, now we gotta pretend to eat that guy uh, once a week on Sunday, you know? Um, and we believe that it actually turns into the blood and flesh in our mouths. It's called transubstantiated. Anyway, it's a whole thing. Um, and yeah, so we got to do that. They'd be like, you're crazy. You're a nutbag psycho. Get out of here. This is a Wendy's. <laughs> but yeah, it's so it's just so interesting, though, how they suspend all of that critical thinking, all that logic, all that everything for this one instance for like because um, it's been beaten into their brain week after week day after day telling them like hey you got to read your bible every day you got to pray it's you got to act like these crazy beliefs are true on a daily basis and the more you act like they are true the more you convince yourself that they are true because i can't tell you how many times i've talked to somebody that's a christian and they've been like well you know i was like you know how do i know that this is true how do how do i do it like and they always say you got to you got to believe it in your heart just you know just you got to seek him in your heart you like truly seek him in your heart and then you'll see that it's basically saying just decide that it's true pretend that it's true and then you'll realize that it is then you'll realize that it's true cuz like they want you to just suspend all logic all reason all critical thinking and just believe it and so the way that they do that one is by saying that you got to seek him wholeheartedly you got to actually believe and seek him which you can't believe until you have good reason to believe like they're telling me to believe in order so that i can believe which is a tautology and it's completely insane right but that not only that they throw this faith thing into it they're like oh well you just got to have faith you know got to have faith got to have faith you know and 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 tell me like what faith you know based on what like you mean confidence because a lot of times they will like act as though they don't mean faith like just believe in it just do it just do it they don't mean that they mean faith in the sense of like confidence oh i just have a lot of confidence that this is the case right you know and because that and that is kind of part of a lot of definitions like oh i have faith in somebody right i have faith in my friend to do the right thing whatever right so it, it technically does have that definition or it has that um categorically within that definition as well but that's not what they're talking about what they're talking about is believing stuff what they don't have a good reason to believe stuff that's what they mean you just gotta do it you just gotta just do it just okay just believe what i'm can you just stop with the just believe it just do it stop with all this quits just do it God, God, just believe the thing I want you to think. You know, that's what they're doing when they say you got to have faith. And that's also what they're doing when they say you got to truly seek him with your heart. It's the same shit. All of it's the same. Just believe what I'm telling you to believe without any good reason to believe it. Believe it because you're, you know, you're desperate. Where, what do you, what's going on in your life? Are you struggling with anything? Well, if you're struggling with anything, you know, okay, I got an answer for you, bro. Like, how desperate are you for an answer? Because I got a talking snake story that just might help you out, buddy. You know, talking snake, talking donkey, dude walks on water, changes water to wine, but we tell you that he hates wine and hates alcohol because, you know, that's evil. Um, but, you know, <laughs> and it's just like those people that are desperate are like, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess I, guess I do need a community that can help me. And that's all they see at 
at, at first. And then they're like, oh, I got to play ball. I got to pretend to do this. I got to raise my hands and close my eyes and uh, like dance and act like I'm worshiping and feeling this thing that everybody's pretending to feel and so on and so forth, right? That's their whole bag, right? It's so interesting the way that they, they do this, the way that they want to get you to believe something without any good reasons. And then they do this type of stuff where it's like, hey, but what about deconstruction? What about the people who have changed their minds? What about the people that have thought about and questioned how do they know that this stuff is even real? You know, and this is their solution for it. Oh no, well, you know what? Hey, let's get this famous cool guy, this cool rapper musician guy, and he'll tell you how to do it. You know, he'll tell you, hey, he's he deconstructed, right? And he came out stronger. You know, because he said he's, you know, it's not, uh, they're not building the new foundation. The foundation is Christ, right? So he's already, you know, so he starts with, hey, the Jesus thing is definitely true. They better not question that or anything like that. But let me question other stuff about, like, why are Christians not so nice to each other a lot of times? <laughs> you know, because that seemed to be all Lecrae was really addressing was that, like, oh, sometimes Christians are not nice to other Christians. Why is it like that? Oh, well, we're all broken. I'm a broken person. You know, um, he goes on in this article to say that type of stuff, but I didn't get to all that. But that's what he was basically saying. And so his deconstruction was just going, hey, anything that's bad about anything in the church is not God. It's just the people. And because we're all bad, broken people, you know, even though we're all believing the same beliefs that are supposed to make us better people. But yet we all it almost seems to work exactly the fucking opposite direction. And everybody seems to use these beliefs to hurt people anyway. So, yeah, it's just in a, <laughs> I, I do like these kind of uh, articles because when they're talking about deconstruction and everything, because it's just it just shows how dishonest they are, you know, because they're trying so hard to pretend like they are actually thinking critically about this type of stuff and they just aren't they're just doing everything they possibly can to not think critically about all this stuff but while trying to convince you that they are you know it's just frustrating <laughs> so uh at the bottom here this is, I, I love this is one reason why i like doing uh, christian post articles is they have uh comments and looks like we got quite a few here so let's take a look um, at some of these it says the conversation right and so it says most of the most of the falling away deconstructions this is from Robert someone Robert most of the falling away deconstructions that I have seen follow a similar pattern using the example of a college age woman here uh, college it's, God, they, and now they're doing they're writing the comment like they do the bullet bullet points and all this. It's got like a bullet point comment. All right, here, let's get this. So college Christian CC uh, wants to do things loose, living, wait, loose, uh, oh, loose living, make friendship and, with the world, be liked by the worldly, etc. <laughs> that are outside of the faith and practice that she was raised in. Uh, uh, college Christian starts checking around atheist slash worldly slash progressive Christian in quotes sites to back up their back up her worldly desires and finds straw man memes that she cannot immediately answer. <laughs> this person's doing exactly the same thing. It's so interesting when they do this. You know, they're like, oh they're trying to you know they're oh they're out just trying to like be liked by people like worldly people and everything and it's like dude you're doing that too you're just being liked by the in group and they're like wanting to be liked by a different in group and you're like oh man see you're just not thinking about this critically you're just trying to impress the in group as are you dumb fuck <laughs> it's so funny they can't see it uh, but and this I, I don't even know like this is just a this is a straw man right here like he's saying oh they find straw man I don't even know if they know what that means straw man arguments that they because straw man arguments you can immediately knock down <laughs> that's why there's a straw man <laughs> it's so stupid i don't yeah i really don't think this person knows what they're talking okay next bullet point instead of putting in the not so hard working to refute the memes <laughs> cc uh, or uh you know uh college christian begins con deconstructing 
her faith. Why is it a her? I mean, it's just odd that they're like, oh, and it's got to be a woman because, you know, women are stupid and emotional. So let's make the let's make this stupid college Christian a woman. Yeah, yeah, that'll fix it. That makes it better. Um, <laughs> but putting not so hard work to refute the memes, the, Christ, the college Christian begins deconstructing her faith with the background. Uh, with the background suppress suppressed in her unrighteousness <laughs> well that's in that's in brackets uh goal of achieving her loose living <laughs> this is you just want to sin this is the you just want to sin <laughs> apologetic of like why you don't which is literally a straw man you're just dis, you're, you are assuming that you're, somebody is doing something for a reason that you have no good reason to believe and yet you're just deciding that they are doing it that way because you have to in order to not see the holes in your own epistemology. So they have to say that, oh, no, they're not legitimately questioning their beliefs, you know, because they're so obviously true. It's because they want to, like, go partying with the with the dudes, man. They want to go party with the guys. They want to have sex. And so since they want to do that stuff, they're just not, they're, you know, they're just slipping away. You know, they're just deciding to think the obviously true things like the talking snake and the carpenter that we got to eat. Uh, you know, all they decide that that's just weird and stupid, <laughs> because they want to have sex and drink that's so obviously why <laughs> it's so it's such a dishonest like way to to argue about stuff finally the christian uh the the college christian comes out i don't know why i'm having trouble making cc into college christian i just it's not working with my mouth uh finally cc comes out as no longer christian in in quotes no longer christian and begins her <laughs> worldly behavior uh if it has not begun already self-convinced that it was rational thought quote unquote rational thought uh yeah because you sound so fucking rational here you've made such a coherent argument it's amazing uh, <laughs> a rational thought and not her objective of friendship with the world that caused her to give up her faith Wow, just so many assumptions. It's like, see, this is exactly why nobody wants to be around you fuckheads. You act like you know everything. How would you possibly know that without this lady explaining that to you? But yet you're going to, oh, but you know, because she's just being manipulated and she's manipulating you. So you got to expect her to be a liar because you have to stand on your lies and keep believing them. And the person that says, no, I don't, I just, you know, I just don't get it. I think it's silly. It sounds crazy. He's like, you just want to sin. Yeah, that's all this is. It's not because you don't believe in talking donkeys. It's because you want to sin. You just want to get drunk, don't you? Yeah. That's not necessarily true. Everybody doesn't, like, everybody out there, especially a lot of, like, college Christian women, since that's who they're clearly talking about, aren't, like, immediately, like, wanting to go out and party and have sex. A lot of them are, like kind of scared of that sort of stuff you know because of all of the uh crazy problems that it can create and dangerous situations and so on and so forth Ten people that are religious uh, especially young religious women tend to want to play it some like at least somewhat safe if not very safe right so you're just wrong they're just not you know if this person was real and, and i'm sure there are real examples of this person existing that it's just you know uh that's just not true you're just making shit up that is literally a straw man he just created a whole just concept of why somebody might do something according to what he wants it to be so that it's you know it's on the fault of the person and not of on the fault of the beliefs being ridiculous uh you know it's it's so that's why <laughs> they fall away anyway all right so uh Mike, somebody says, uh, somebody named Mike said, deconstruction equals apostasy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, sometimes I mean, it's like, it's like they said, some people question it and then end up, uh, believing harder <laughs> because they, you know, they think that they've got like better arguments. Usually the arguments like devolve into like Darkeesian, like nonsense of like, well, how do you know? that you're you're so you're relying on your fallible brain 
to come to conclusions about how your fallible brain is able to come to conclusions. Therefore, God, you know, it's crazy, just nonsense, brain pretzel bullshit that they have to do in order to not sound like talking snakes and talking donkeys are stupid. Like, you know what I mean? To sound like that's not unreasonable to believe, <laughs> you know, and not to mention all of the other stupid shit that they believe, you know, that like stoning your children uh, for talking back or getting drunk is like what the what like the moral thing to do according to the perfect loving god give me a break man so this person's name don uh the end times began the day well this one's gonna be fun okay the end times in quotes began the day of pentecost we read in the epistles that there will be a falling away quote unquote or in more modern terms, there will be backsliders. <laughs> if you are not constantly growing in Jesus Christ, then you are probably sliding or falling away. The great falling away. It's okay, I can't keep doing this. The great falling away takes place after the rapture as the Holy Spirit steps aside or joins the church, which has been raptured for the for the marriage uh, supper of the Lamb. God, this person is like completely got their brain in the blender. Oh man, poor thing. I you know I always just kind of feel bad for these people because I mean l listen to how much fucking like overconfident assumption just craziness this person has said already just within these couple of sentences he's just assuming so much the end times began the day of pentecost two thousand fucking years ago really the end days have been going on for two thousand fucking years and it doesn't seem like anything that y'all are saying is supposed to happen is even close to happening it's just you know keeps being misinterpreted and you know rationalized to have been you know uh coming closer and closer to taking place but never actually happening you know it's just oh it's your interpretation uh and then if you are not constantly growing see right there that is a it's a, it's a if you are not constantly growing in jesus christ then you are probably backsliding or falling away that is so important to look at that now think about that for a second if you are not constantly growing what does that mean if you are not going to church every day where they keep reinvesting your existence in these beliefs and this in group and this community then you are starting to go, I don't know, man, this stuff sounds kind of stupid. So they're like, you you have to keep doing that. You have to keep reading this book and not only reading the book, but reading the book in a, such a way to where you're like, this stuff is super duper true and is super duper helpful and everything about it is awesome and great and wonderful. You know, that's what they want you to do, right? Uh, and if you're not doing that every day, yeah, of course, eventually you're going to be like, man this stuff's dumb this stuff makes no sense it's like i don't know why i used to think that it's crazy that i used to think that but the reason you used to think that is because of them expecting you to do what this person is telling you you have to do keep on you know washing your brain <laughs> let the lord wash over your brain and brainwash you into believing that stuff and never like stop doing it because if you stop for even a second you uh you won't be there anymore anyway uh, the greatest falling away takes place after the rapture as the Holy Spirit steps aside. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because so the whole thing, this is why you started with the Pentecost thing, right? I like said the, the great falling away takes place after the rapture as the Holy Spirit steps aside because he, he brought up Pentecost because that was supposedly the first time that the Holy Spirit like came into existence or came down. That's according to their beliefs or this person's belief. That's why he put that. And now he's saying, and when the rapture happens, then the Holy Spirit's like, all right, I'm good. I'm out, you know. And so he, he takes a step back, right? And then that's why all the people start to, to fall away or whatever. But, uh, oh, oh, I guess before the rapture. Wait, right? No, no, no. At, at the rapture. That's right. But he's starting to back off kind of, you know, because he's saying they're falling away because the Holy Spirit's starting to back off a little bit. Without the Holy Spirit, who is the restrainer of evil, there is absolutely no Christian influence uh, present, and there is a massive rebellion, which leads to the tribulation. <laughs> God, this person is so, like, lost in their brain, man. It's insane. They just got their brain fully invested and reinvested and invested and reinvested in this 
belief system so that they can act like they know stuff they couldn't possibly know. <laughs> I believe a period of deconstruction can be a positive experience. Okay, now he's finally getting to like what he actually wanted to say. <laughs> uh, positive experience. It gives a Christian pause to reflect on the principles of their faith and with the leading of the Holy Spirit will only strengthen their faith and help remove any false teachings from their lives that could be could have knowingly become attached to their beliefs as the author stated the foundation is Jesus Christ <laughs> yeah in other words that's the thing that you cannot question you are not allowed to question the you know the fact that Jesus that, that you have to believe that Jesus is God that he is perfect that he did come he did say all the stuff that he said he did die he did rise from dead you know and left an empty tomb uh even though he was crucified and crucified people don't get put in tombs that's stupid <laughs> uh deconstruction is not uh this is another one john three sixteen is the person's name his name is john three sixteen. <laughs> these people are so predictable god it's so boring deconstruction is not in the bible oh my god wow a made-up term originated by uh, Jacques Derrida. He was called uh, the Enchanted Atheist. <laughs> he was called the Enchanted Atheist. The church would do well to go back to the Bible and know is not to be taken away from or added to. <laughs> So, yeah, you're like, well, it's not like that word specifically does not appear in the actual Bible. Therefore, bad. <laughs> that is hilarious. I love it when they do that, you know, and they're just like, the reason it's bad is because it's not mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> like, how simple do you have to be, dude? Holy shit. Crazy. Okay. Uh, should this be a surprise? This is not being judgmental. It is just, oh, this is Jim. Uh, it is just that the this shouldn't be surprising. Most churchgoers don't read the Bible. Most uh, churchgoers don't believe Jesus is the only way to the Father. Most churchgoers are ignorant uh, or disagree with the basics of the faith. Uh, why would it be surprising that most churchgoers are ignorant of such an intel intellectual concept as deconstruction? when they are ignorant of the basics <laughs> so that's basically what, what jim here is trying to say is that it uh you know they, they weren't true christians to begin with you know that uh, so it's either you just want to sin or you weren't ever an actual true christian to begin with right because they're they see the whole that like, questioning uh the faith thing just does not actually fit in any kind of uh it just doesn't fit in their head as something that can happen like reasonably you know um but <laughs> this is funny so this is 12c or i2c i can't really tell uh maybe christians are finally reading their bible instead of listening to their pastor's lies oh it's an atheist <laughs> hey nice nice 12c love it love to see it keep doing it <laughs> uh ha it's this from have only loved you <laughs> Okay. Uh, interesting how woke. <laughs> oh, and it's the last one too. Oh, this is adorable. All right, here we go. Oh, God, I love it. We got a crazy. We got a crazy, y'all. All right, here we go. Interesting how woke left concepts like deconstruction. <laughs> how is it? How is deconstruction woke or left? <laughs> like what? Okay. Anyway find their way into Christian. This is why I'm saying like just everything is woke to these people. They can't def like, this is why it's such a joke. Then they try to define it because it doesn't mean anything. It's just a word for what they don't like. And that's it. So anyway, uh, deconstruction, find their way into Christian thought after Jackie's, uh, Derrida, very woke French philosopher first expounded. So he's, he's cause they did the, the last person that said that that person, that Derrida, Derrida um, started that word. He left a, a link. And so this person clearly read the link that the other person put up there. Uh, very woke French philosopher. Now he's just kind of 
like uh, you know saying like more of what the, the wiki article said uh, very f French uh, philosopher first expounded it as a technique for textual analysis over 50 years ago radical feminism deconstruction what is CP coming to what is the Christian post coming to <laughs> and that is the last comment oh my goodness these I swear these things do they just they deliver man this is good this is just very interesting stuff you know I just I find the Christian posts to be just so funny and yeah it, it of the different Christian um, like news organizations and stuff then and they do try to do news too although a lot of their news just ends up being this like hey Lecrae talked about deconstruction da, 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 da. okay uh, great yeah um, but of the ones that do the news I, this one's my favorite because they do stuff like this all the time you know it's just fun it's just it's just good stuff you know all right well hey if you want to um if you want to contact me you can email me at uh, unapologetic666 at gmail.com if you want to be uh, become a patron you can go to patreon.com forward slash unapologetics spelled like this show and uh, if you want to seriously check out the YouTube show it's awesome uh, it's just covering a lot of different stuff and it's uh, at punk Aposte. So you know, like we always do, what do we say to the haters, discriminators, and masturbator shamers? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>